wanted to talk about something that's often neglected, all right, and that's minerals. All right, now we have basically two broad classifications of minerals. We have the macro minerals. All right, and those are the minerals that we think about a lot of times when we, when we think about minerals. Those would be things like calcium, magnesium, iron, all right, but there are also it's another class of minerals called micro minerals. All right, and these are the ones you don't think about as often, and the reason for that is you only need very, 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 very tiny amounts of these minerals. All right, whereas these you need in the, in the milligrams or even the hundreds of milligrams for most of them per day. These you need in like fractions of a milligram. Just that's why they're called trace minerals. We only need very, 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 very small amounts of them. Which is a good thing because these are the minerals that are just found in very, 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 very trace amounts in nature. All right, but just because we don't need much of them doesn't mean they're any less important. All right, because your body uses these trace minerals uh, to, for a lot of the chemical reactions that take, take place in the body. All right, now to give an example of what I'm talking about here, who's heard of vanadium? All right, a couple of people, well, you, you heard from the last lecture. A couple of people heard about vanadium. Vanadium's a trace mineral. All right, chromium. Right. Probably a lot of us heard, heard about chromium. These are just two. They're actually about 70 to 90 different trace minerals. Um, and the reason I mention these particular ones is these, uh, a deficiency in vanadium or chromium um, can make you, can predispose you to a type 2 diabetes. All right, and type 2 diabetes is actually epidemic uh, in our society right now. I mean, it's, it rivals heart disease um, and cancer is like the biggest killer of Americans. All right, now a lot of that is um, too much sugar in our diets, being overweight and underactive. All right, but it's also associated, you're predisposed to it if you are deficient in vanadium and chromium. And I, for one, know uh, people who had type 2 diabetes and went on chromium and vanadium um, and actually uh, were, you know, they, they stopped having the symptoms of the type 2 diabetes. All right, that doesn't mean that everybody who has type 2 diabetes is going to be cured if they take vanadium and chromium. All right, just the people who are deficient in, in those. But even the people who are, uh, are not deficient, they could still, um, and if, if their diabetes is caused from some other reason, namely being overweight and out of shape, a type 2 diabetes, uh, again, is what I'm talking about. Even they can be helped by getting a little bit of extra vanadium and chromium. All right, the thing about trace minerals, or micro minerals, and trace minerals is another term for it. It's the same thing, trace minerals. Um, so the thing about trace minerals is that Americans are typically very, very deficient in, uh, in trace minerals. And part of that is because of overworked soil. All right, now when, uh, when farmers work the soil year in and year out, they use the nutrients in the soil and they put certain things back in the soil like nitrogen, for example. All right, but they don't put minerals back in, in the soil. All right, now uh, everybody's heard of the benefits of organic gardening. All right, and there are a lot of benefits including less pesticides in your food, right? Because they don't use pesticides on the plants that they grow organically. All right, but another thing about organically grown food is it is higher in the uh, trace minerals. And the reason for that is when you grow organically, you use natural fertilizer, right? Like compost, manure. These are things that are rich in, um, in trace minerals. So that's, that's a good reason to, to actually um, grow organically. Um, <clears throat> I brought a couple of visual aids over here. Hold on. Thank you. Okay. Here's a product called Trace Mineral Maintenance. This is a nutritional supplement. All right, the reason I brought this is because it has a list of, um, of trace minerals in here, um, like an antimony, barium, beryllium, bismuth, boron. Boron is uh, very important for your bones, like calcium, uh, macro mineral. You can have a lot of calcium in your diet, but if you don't have the trace mineral boron, you won't actually use the uh, calcium that's in your diet to maximum efficiency. 
All right, uh, bromine, uh, cerium, cesium, chlorine, chromium, cobalt, copper, and I'm just in the C's. Okay, they're listed alphabetically here. All right, so this is an example of how many trace minerals are out here. The reason I brought this supplement is to show you that, yes, you know, people actually do take supplements. Th th these trace minerals are not in your typical multivitamin product, uh, but they are, but I'm, I'm showing this because, yes, people do pay good money to get trace minerals as a nutritional supplement. Because tonight I'm going to talk a about a, a way for you to get your trace minerals without taking a nutritional supplement. Although I still recommend nutritional supplements, and I do, by the way, I grow organically, and I eat or, uh, mostly organically grown food, but I still take a trace mineral supplement. The one I take, by the way, is usually liquid. This, this tablet's here. I do take a liquid form that's more easily absorbable than the tablets. All right, but, um, but our plants uh, need minerals. We're talking about getting back to gardening. Our plants need trace minerals, too. All right, and where they get it, they get it from the soil. All right, and when the minerals are in the soil and the plants can get the minerals, the plants are healthier. All right, now, when you, when you have garden plants that suffer from um, diseases, there are different approaches to uh, treating those diseases. One is you can use certain products that target those particular diseases. Like if there's a pest, you can use certain uh, poisons to kill that pest. Uh, hopefully, you know, you can find something natural uh, to kill that pest. All right, but another way to, uh, for plants to uh, fight off pests is naturally. Just like we have natural resistance to disease, plants have natural resistance to disease. All right, just like us, we need these trace minerals to have our maximum resistance to disease for our bodies to function, for our immune systems to function maximally. All right, we need these trace minerals. What's well, the same with your plants? And if you have uh, a lot of problems with diseases of your plants, so not just diseases, but even insect infestations, because if the plants are deficient in trace minerals, they're less, they're less able to, to fend off insects as well. You know, plants, sometimes they secrete certain you know, defense mechanisms, certain odors or whatever to re repel bugs. Um, but if plants are deficient in, in trace minerals, they will be more susceptible to disease. All right, so a good reason to supplement your soil with trace minerals is for healthier plants. And the benefit uh, to that is not only for your plants, but the plants absorb minerals from the soil, and then they're contained in the plant. All right, minerals are rocks. Your body can't make it. Plants can't make it. Minerals on this earth uh, were created at the creation of earth, and they're not created after that, right? Uh, gold is a mineral. Gold is actually mentioned on here. If they have, for, for thousands of years, uh, alchemists have tried to figure out a way to make gold out of base metals, and it just, they can't do it. It just, it just can't happen. It's the same with all minerals, all right? If they're not in the soil, the plant is not going to get it because the plant can't make the minerals. All right, now, the other thing that um, plants need is they need beneficial bacteria in the soil in order to absorb these minerals, any minerals. All right, beneficial bacteria actually cling to the roots of the plant, and the beneficial bacteria actually take the minerals, and they allow, they allow a chemical conversion there, which allows the root of the plant to take up the trace minerals. All right, so even if you have trace minerals in your soil, if the beneficial bacteria is not in the soil, your plant, you know, can't use it as well. Very similar in our own bodies. Uh, I'm sure most of you have heard about beneficial flora that's in your intestinal tract. Or like 80% of our immune system is actually in our intestinal tract. And most of the living cells in our bodies are not actually our own cells. All right, most of the cells in this body are not my DNA. Most of the cells in my body are actually the beneficial bacteria, most of which is in the gut. It's everywhere. It's, it's in the skin. Uh, it's in the lungs. Um, but most of it is in the gut. Um, and it's very, very important, again, for your health, you know, for us to have uh, the beneficial bacteria in our gut. All right, that's not the topic of tonight's discussion, so I'm not going to go further into, into that. 
but I'm just drawing the analogy of, you know, beneficial bacteria is, is necessary for us. It's also necessary for the plants, all right, in order for them to get the minerals. Now, the problem is um, pesticides kill you know, beneficial bacteria. Not only pesticides, but a lot of your chemical fertilizers. They, they kill off the beneficial bacteria. All right, so a lot of the farming practices in, in uh, uh, well, world, worldwide, really, I was gonna say in the US, but pretty much worldwide, most of the farming practices revolve around using these chemical pesticides, right, on the crops. Well, it also kills the beneficial bacteria. Just like us, again, I'm drawing the analogy with uh, the human body, we have beneficial bacteria in our bodies, and you probably heard about when you take an antibiotic, it kills off the beneficial bacteria in your, your body, and that's the reason a lot of people <coughs> say, well, take, you know, supplements like yogurt uh, to re help replace the beneficial bacteria after you've been on antibiotics. Well, it's the same with the plants, you know, and constantly adding these chemicals to the soil, just ki the, so the soil is just almost sterile, or at least it's sterile of the beneficial bacteria that plants need to absorb the trace minerals. All right, to me, that is one of the most important reasons for organically gardening, okay? One is because to avoid the pesticides themselves because the pesticides are taken up by the plant and then we eat these pesticides. All right, but the other reason is because um, the beneficial bacteria, it destroys beneficial bacteria, which is, which is bad for your plants. All right, now, I talked about the supplement here. You can also get your trace minerals from your vegetables. All right, if your vegetables or your their greens or whatever you grow, if they have it, you know, again, you're, they're rocks and, and they can't create it, your body can't create it. If it's not there, you're not gonna get it. All right, so the way that you can get your trace minerals is by eating plants that are rich in trace minerals. That's the best way to get them. And um, that is, again, the primary reason, or one of the primary reasons for growing organically. All right, so what I want to talk about tonight is doing two things. I'm going to suggest two things that you can do. Um, well, actually, I'm going to suggest three things, probably. And maybe more, if some more come to mind. Um, but um, one is grow organically, right? Compost your vegetable matter. Uh, you know, when you, uh, like any of our vegetable banana peels, any other vegetable matter, it all goes in our compost. We have compost buckets separate underneath the sink and then that goes out in the compost bin outside. All right, I buy bananas from whoever, wherever they come from, right? Some foreign country. All right, those banana peels go in the compost. Well, guess what? Those are trace minerals from an another, you know, part of the country or another part of the world. Um, vegetables that come in from other states, you know, again, trace minerals are coming, you know, from all these different areas that we get the, our vegetables, especially if you buy organically grown food. Uh, and, and on that topic, um, organically grown food, I read uh, one time that uh, they, they, they tested spinach and they found out that organically grown spinach had 100 times more iron than conventionally grown spinach. All right, that's just one, iron is just one mineral, okay? You can, you can say pretty much the same thing for, you know, for all these, these minerals in there. All right, so how do you um, get the minerals back in your soil? Again, I mentioned composting, uh, but you can also supplement, especially if your soil has been uh, used, you know, whoever had it, you know, say if you're new to that area, whoever had it before, they could have used pesticides, you know, or they could have overworked their soil. I know when we moved out to Robertsville, I tested our soil, and this was a place where there had never been a garden, all right, and our soil was really deficient in uh, nitrogen. It was way, way, way too alkaline. And uh, there's a gravel road right by my garden, and it's, it's all calcium. You know, most of the gravel around here is that white rock, and it's like all calcium. All right, and then uh, also living in the Ozarks, a lot of there's a lot of water. Live on the hill, a lot of water leaches your minerals out, and then leaches this calcium in. And uh, as a result, my uh, soil was really deficient, um, and it was really, really way alkaline. So the first year I've gardened, I, had, I did a lot of stuff, you know, adding um, to the soil in order, like compost, manure, um, sulfur, which is something you can add to help lower the pH of your garden. Uh, so last year I, did, I had, did not have a, a tremendously good garden this first year in that location, but I did discover a lot of problems with the soil that I started correcting then. I've been correcting all along. 
So hopefully this year I'm looking for a much better year. One of the things I added was something called, oh, there it is. Um, some people call this rock dust. But rock dust is not a really good term because that could be dust from any kind of rock, right? I mean, my garden is already full of rock dust from all this calcium there. All right, so if your rock is just nothing but calcium, you know, then what are you getting when you add rock dust? All right, this is an example of one product. I bought this in the, uh, like a garden supply store somewhere out in rural Missouri uh, near Springfield. I don't know if they sell it around here or not. I haven't found it around here. It's called Azomite, A-Z-O-M-I-T-E. This is a brand, this is a brand name. Okay, what happened to my black? Oh, there it is. How did it look over there? Um, all right, azomite stands for A to Z of minerals. All right, in other words, it contains A to Z. It contains all the trace minerals. It actually comes, this one actually comes from volcanic uh, rock. Um, and there's, there are other types. Uh, from around the world. Bentonite clay is another. This is micro, micronized. I'm going to pass this around. This is completely non-toxic. It's just ground up rocks. And I want you to see, notice how fine it is. Um, and that's what you want. You want mic micronized because the smaller it is, the, easy, the easier it's going to be for it to you know, be taken up by the plants. Um, so this is something completely natural, completely organic. It's just, just trace minerals, you know. You, you spread it on over the soil, you till it in, and then you're good to go. But one other thing I recommend adding is beneficial bacteria. Uh, now you can add beneficial bacteria from your compost because that's what's growing in your compost, right? It's bacteria. All right, but I like to, especially in the, starting in a place where it's deficient, obviously deficient in bacteria. And this is a product I picked up here at a um, local store, I think Walmart maybe, I think they had this on sale last year. Um, but also, I bought this in a larger bag. By the way, that azomite, I buy this in a 40-pound bag. And a 40-pound bag costs like about $14, $15 or something like that. It's not, not terribly expensive. It goes a long way. All right, but the beneficial bacteria is also not uh, expensive. If you look on the label here, you see Arthrobacter glo globiformis, Azotobacteria, Cochrococcium, on and on and on, just a whole bunch of uh, beneficial bacteria you've probably never heard of. I haven't heard of them. Um, but anyway, so I just wanted to mention that there are, just like you can buy, you know, supplements to benefit, you know, to replace your own bacteria. Uh, this is also something good to add to your soil. If you just add the minerals and your soil is deficient in bacteria, then your plants are not necessarily going to be able to use it. Um, and um, that's pretty much um, what I wanted to tell you tonight, but I will answer, I'll entertain questions, yes? Did you do any tests uh, before you did the azomite to determine your trace mineral content? No, I, no, I didn't uh, know, I, I don't have any tests to, to, okay, te to detect a trace minerals. I'm not sure how you would do that. I know there's a way to do I that. I didn't know many, that's why I was yeah. wondering. If you now, the only that. test that I did, I did pH tests, and I also tested for um, like nitrogen, you know, the big nitrogen, po nitrogen po potash, or just bas the basic nutrients. Um, but I figured my soil was deficient uh, because my plants just didn't, didn't do very well. Um, and and I, I adjusted the pH of the soil somewhat, uh, but they, they just didn't do as well as they could have. Yeah, no. Uh, but I just want to make sure, you know, it doesn't hurt. I mean, even if the beneficial bacteria is in there, it, this is not very not expensive. Not and it doesn't hurt to, you know, add that, add some more minerals to your soil. Any other questions on that topic? Yes, sir. What's your recommendation on the top five items to grow that you're going to get the most trace minerals from? Yeah. Is it the, the kale? Is it the leafy greens? Or is it, you know, the more starchy vegetables like squash? Yeah. No, it's not so much the starchy vegetables. It's like most of the dark green vegetables like kale. Kale is a super, super food. I grow a lot of kale, several different varieties of, of kale. I dry it. Kale is, is, is easy to dehydrate and keep, you know. And then when we want to eat it, we throw it in with the chicken, like in the, in the uh, um, pressure cooker, and it rehydrates, and it's just like, you know, greens. It's just like you'd cook fresh greens after rehydrated. But kale is something that's 
really, really nutrient dense food, but your dark green vegetables will have the most trace minerals, but all of your vegetables will have trace minerals in them, and there'll be different minerals on different vegetables. That's one reason why you should eat a variety of food. You know, your squash and all those, I mean, they're, they're mineral rich too. Um, anything else? How what now? How thick you put well, it, uh, it, it tells you on the uh, a bag, like how many pounds to use per square footage. Uh, but I just throw it out there. <laughs> you know, it's, you, you can't use too much of it. It's, it's, they're, they're just rocks. So I just like, I, I have this little thing that, you know, it sprays, it sprays it all over the place. And I just like cover the ground kind of, you know, lightly. And then, and then before I till it in. Where do you send your soil sample? I didn't send that. I bought a test. You can buy a test in Walmart or, or garden supply stores. It costs about $10. Um, that that tests that test your, your soil pH and those uh, new key nutrients like nitrogen, uh, potash. Uh, I mean, that's, that's all I did. You know, $10 kit from the garden supply, supply store. Anything else? You ever use uh, diatomaceous earth? Is that good for insect um, control? All right, yeah, diatomaceous earth is good. The only thing is, uh, you know, another thing, I, I'm, I talked about beneficial bacteria. Another very, very important thing that I haven't mentioned yet is, is beneficial insects. All right, like ladybugs, praying mantises, you know, that, that eat other insects. And I notice when, when my vegetable, when my vegetables are plagued by any particular kind of insect, uh, I notice at the same time they're beneficials on there. So when you treat the bad insects, if you tr you know you don't want to use something that harms the beneficials because you're also killing off the, the good ones with the bad ones. All right, and uh, that um, affects um, insects that have an exoskeleton. Yeah. All right, which are most of them. Yeah. And um, you think all is it all of them? Um, or, or maybe it's, it's, it's the ones that have the exoskeleton and joints, and joint legs. I guess most insects. That's what I read. I mean, so I guess maybe there are some who don't have, like, caterpillars. Uh, but anyway, um, that's the one that, you know, that product kills. But, but also your beneficials, though, are pretty much, you know, I mean, so, uh, you know, I use uh, that on my dog, as a powder on my dog, it's very, very non-toxic, it's very, very safe, you know, it's just right. calcium. Um, and, um, um, I, but, but I use it, you know, as a powder on my dog to like help with fleas and ticks, uh, but I don't put it on my garden because I don't want to harm the beneficial bacteria. And, any, and that's, that's the problem again, you know, with using these pesticides, you know, not only do they get in the plant, then we eat these pesticides, but they also kill off your beneficial insects which is what, you know, that's nature's way of taking care of the insect problem in the first place. You know. So if you work with your beneficials and you, you, know, you, you work with the nutrition of your plants, you know, don't just you know, give it fertilizer, nitrogen and stuff like that, but also think about the trace minerals and everything the plants need as far as you know, pH and stuff like that. Um, but you know, that's the way, that's the better way I think to, um, you know, to, to handle in, insect problems. And then sometimes if, I have, if I'm growing a plant it's just, it's just plagued with problems and I can't do anything about it. Uh, you know, anything that I try doesn't work. I just stop growing that vegetable and start growing something that's more resistant, you know, to it. I mean, just, I just kind of try to go with, go with nature. Anything else? Okay, bottom line is you need to balance the health of your soil. It's the health of the soil that gives us healthy plants, and it's healthy plants that give us health and longevity. And that is all that I have.